Equipment profiling may be the most powerful yet underutilized feature of the iManifold system, and it's absolutely critical that you understand how to use this. So, you know, when you think about this, when we're looking at the system operating in our lab right here, you can see we've got our low and our high pressure, our saturation temperatures, our superheat, and our subcooling, but do we really know if this system's even operating correctly? I mean, you can see over here the system's stable, but how is it actually working? You know, in fact, if we turn on troubleshooting here and we were to tap on that triangle, you'd see there's not even enough information to diagnose the problem. I mean, uh, it's one thing to see what the pressures are, but what should they be? And that's where profiling comes into play. So when we look at profiling, there's two ways you can do this. Um, you can either do it right through a project or you can do it right from the equipment profiling menu. Uh, as if you do a project, it'll be part of the, of the uh, process. But in this case here, uh, we're just gonna go right to equipment profiling and uh, start there. And we're gonna start with uh, profiling a new system. So you can see that the refrigerant came in automatically. Uh, if we needed to change that, we could, uh, but it came in automatically based off the refrigerant we had selected. The next thing is we need to, to uh, select our application, in this case a heat pump, and then we need to select what mode we're in, in this case we're in cooling. The next thing we need to do is determine what type of indoor metering device we have. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at that. In this case, you can see we have a thermostatic expansion valve, so we'll go ahead and we'll add that to the profile. Now that we have the metering device set, we need to determine some other information about the system. So we're gonna skip over benchmarking right now, but I will get back to that in a minute, and we're gonna go right down to the type of condenser. So to determine the type of the condenser, you have sort of wide ranges here. So most of the stuff we run across today is between the 10 sear to 22 sear range. You don't see a lot of six to eight sear equipment, but it's still out there. In this case here, um, we have a 13 to 16 sear piece of equipment, and that information can come from multiple places. It can come from a model number, or it can be just as simple as looking at the manufacturer's energy guide label. You can see on this energy guide label, it's quite clear this is a 13 sear system, um, and it's a very easy place to pull that data from if you have it. Now, there are no head pressure controls on this unit, and we're gonna go ahead and select a type of evaporator, and in this case, it's a standard efficiency evaporator coil. The reason we know it's standard efficiency is because it's a matched system. In other words, the condenser and the air handler are matched tonnage-wise. So two-ton uh, condenser, two-ton evaporator coil. When we get into a high-efficiency evaporator, it's typically when they go uh, a half to a full ton oversize the condenser. So you might have a two-ton condenser with a two-and-a-half or a three-ton evaporator coil. That larger evaporator coil is going to operate at a higher saturation temperature or a lower design temperature difference. These two things you're seeing here, this DTD is design temperature difference, and this can either be 35 degrees colder than the return air or 30 degrees. In this case, I said, like we said before, it's a standard evaporator, so we'll go ahead and select that. Now, the next thing we need to do is determine our target superheat and target subcooling. Well, again, this is a TXV system, so we expect to see somewhere between, uh, usually between probably eight and 20 degrees of superheat. Typically, I'll set these at about 12 degrees for the superheat setting, but let's find out what the manufacturer requires for target subcooling. Looking here at the chart, you can see that based upon the air handler we have, the RPNL 018, and the temperature in the shop being about 82 degrees, our target subcooling is about 17 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and input that in as part of the profile. To change the target subcooling, you just tap it. It'll pull up the display, a keyboard. We'll put that in there, and then we're going to enter in our nominal tonnage here at 1.5 tons. And then we have an option of either creating a quick profile or simply submitting it. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a quick profile. So we'll go ahead and hit submit. It's going to ask you to confirm you'd like to create a quick profile, and then we can either auto name that quick profile or we can um, we can give it a name if we if we'd like to. So I could simply call this thing a ream heat pump. So we'll call that a ream 13 sear, hit enter. And now you can see when I hit submit here, not only do I have the pressures just like before, but now I also have targets. So now if I scroll across the bottom line here, you can see now 
that we have target. So my target suction pressure is 136. My target superheat is 12. My target subcooling is 17. My target high pressure is 344. And all these targets are being calculated off that basic profile. Now, again, we haven't benchmarked the system yet. You can see how close that is if we edit that current profile. This is just a standard uh, profile for a 13 sear heat pump system, right? And those targets are pretty well nailed. I mean, it's looking pretty good just as it sits right now. You can see that we have a 17 uh, degree target for our subcooling. We're at 19.8, so we're right at the threshold of maybe being a little bit overcharged, but uh, it's within the allowable three plus or minus three degrees, so we're actually pretty good. If we tap on that troubleshooting triangle now, you can see this is a normally operating system. So again, this allows us to see uh, not only what the readings are, but now are they where they should be? So we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you the next real powerful feature of this, and that is um, being able to store this in the cloud as a benchmark. So we go in there and we, if we benchmark this system, what we're gonna do is I'm recording exactly the way that system's operating. So you can see right here that that subcooling went right to the center. And I just collapsed it by accident, sorry about that. The subcooling went right to the center, superheats at the center, our pressures are dead centers. You know, we're at 134 target suction, we're at 135, 346, 348. Those are more or less, um, you know, spot on. You can't get too much more precise than that. Everything is set up by, by saturation temperature. So this system now has been benchmarked. And what we've just said is this is exactly the way that I want this piece of equipment to operate. We've, we've baselined it for anybody at our company. So now that we've benchmarked the system, what we've essentially said is this is the way that I left that system operating. This is a baseline for any other technician to come out and use from this point forward if we save this data to the cloud, which I'll show you in another video. But you can see right now that not only is it telling us what things are, but where they should be. So this becomes extremely powerful for troubleshooting to determine if the system operating correctly or not. And anybody else coming out now will have this information at their fingertips to, and no one will have to guess because they're gonna have the exact profile that I used for this piece of equipment when I came out and commissioned it. So they're gonna know right away that this is a heat pump and in the cooling mode with a standard TXV, it's gonna have a design temperature difference of 20.1 degrees hotter than the outdoor air and the evaporator is 35.7 degrees colder than the return air. I left it with a target superheat of 13 and a target subcooling of 19.6 so that if they test this piece of equipment again, they'll know if it's operating the way that I left it or the way that I commissioned the, the system. So it's an extremely powerful feature that allows anybody to do very, very quick diagnostics on a return trip because right away, as soon as they hook the I-manifold system up, they're gonna know not only how is it running, but is it running where it should be. And this, again, is, is, is an extremely powerful feature. If you learn to use it, it'll really change the way that you, uh, that you do service with the I-Manifold system.